All right, hey, welcome to Discovery Church. How many excited to be in God's house today? Amen. We're glad that you're here. Glad you're joining us online, viewing with us today. We're still in the book of James here. We're in part six of this book. And today I'm really excited about, I am so excited about today. I know it's like part six. Some of you are like, I don't know if you're, if some of you are like, okay, when is this going to end? Or you're like, yes, give me, give me more. I don't know what boat you're in today, but I really hope that to get your attention a little bit, to perk up your ears, because today is, we're studying the beginning of chapter three of James. And this is like the big reason why I chose this book. And I really felt like the Lord was leading us to study this book together because what's tucked in to James chapter three. So let me just set it up for you guys. Remember, James is writing this book to these Christians who've been scattered, right? There's a lot of persecution and trials and, and they, they, they were just, they couldn't meet in Jerusalem anymore. So they, they wandered all over and there was just a, a trialing, scattering season for the believers of that day and age, this early church. And it resembles a lot of what we're going through right now, the scattering, there's hundreds of people that are still, thousands of people that are joining us online because they cannot or don't feel comfortable to come yet or for whatever reason cannot come. So there is still kind of a scattering that is happening in the middle of the chaos. And, and James is writing to these people who are scattered and he's talking to them about some of the things that we've talked about here in these last few weeks about dynamic faith and what it is and what real faith looks like. And last week, this, this tongue that needs to be tamed. But here in James chapter three, starting with verse one, we're gonna, or verse uh, 13, sorry, James chapter three, verse 13. He says this, who is wise and understanding among you? We're gonna get some wisdom today. Here's why I believe the Lord led us to this series is because every one of us are experiencing the same season. We're all going through a lot of similar struggles. I mean, we've all been through the same pandemic, the same quarantine. There's a lot of things that we have similarity in the struggle of our season. There's some unique things that maybe you've been through that only you have been through. And they're like unique things that I've been through that only I have been through. But, but we've all been through the same struggle, but there are some people that are handling it differently. So we're all going through the same stuff, the same quarantine, the same stuff, and one person's handling it this way and the other person's handling it this way. And I believe the difference is wisdom. What's on the other side often of your regrets is wisdom. Wisdom is the difference. James is connecting the, the, the value of wisdom in the middle of our chaos, like how we live our life, that this isn't just experience or intellect or knowledge. This is different where you respond to challenges of life differently than other people respond. In fact, the Hebrew word for, for um, wisdom is skill in living. So this isn't just like knowledge. It's not just intellect. It doesn't mean that you've even developed this skill because this kind of wisdom, you actually have some things that you couldn't have possibly had or known like God gave you that. You didn't study that or read that. There are some things that just God deposited inside of you uh, because it is a wisdom from heaven. So we're all going through the same things, but some of us are responding different. And what we need, I believe, what we need is wisdom. Because, I mean, you know, the trials aren't over. We're, we're living in a day and age where trials are going to increase. And it, breaks my, it just breaks my heart as a pastor to see the sifting and the shaking that some of you thought you were stronger than you were. You thought you were. Because, because maybe you did some Christian things, and, 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 but, but inside it, there was some turmoil happening, and it goes on. He says, you'll know who, who's wise. Let them show it, he says, by, like, even though there's, like, civil unrest and, and po politicians and votings and, and quarantines and pandemics and economic stuff, let them show it by their good life. Okay, and not only that, let them, th these, these wise people, is gonna they're gonna use these dark days to show deeds done in humility that comes from, say that word out loud, that comes from wisdom. We need wisdom, and we're gonna get some wisdom today, but I, got, I gotta explain this to you, because some of you think wisdom is, okay, tell me, teach me, show me, show me then. And there are some, like, you know, portions of, you know, this thing that I can maybe deposit into you and pass off to you, you can try to implement 
and do better, but that's not Christianity. That's not what our faith is. And I wanna just take a moment and remind you, Christianity is not becoming a new and improved version of you. That's not what Christianity is at all. It's not a new improved version of you because you worked harder and you tried some new things and you prayed that prayer and you read some verses or you, or you came to Discovery Church. That, like, that's not what made you a Christian. Christianity is a transformed life. It's an inside out thing. And what I mean by that is that God will do some things in you that you don't even recognize. You start to look at yourself and go, who is this guy? Like, I'm not the same guy I was before Jesus. That guy, I can't even recognize some of the things that God is doing in me. There are some people that attend Discovery that know the high school Jason. You don't want to know. <laughs> don't befriend them. No, I'm just kidding. Don't ask them for the secrets. Uh, I don't, I don't know that dude. That dude is like so far away from, God will do some things inside of you guys. Then you go, what in the world? Who am I now? He'll change you from the inside out. He'll teach you some things. He'll do some things in you. And it's not like he's gonna go, hey, here's some rules. Hey, be a little bit more religious. Try following these things. It'll, it'll help you out. Uh, no, that's not what it is. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old is passed away. All things are brand new. That's what it means to be in Christ. He'll make you better. He's gonna make you better, man. And some people say, oh, you Christians just think you're better. You just be no, no, no. God doesn't make me better than everyone else. He makes me better than me. He changes me. That's what God wants to do. And the reason why I tell you that is because I want you to get some wisdom today, some wisdom, but I don't want you just applying it up here. Like it's gotta, this thing has got to get impressed upon your heart where God transforms and changes you from the inside out where he writes his principles and his will upon your very heart. Now look, if you don't get this, you're gonna get the same results everybody else is getting. The next verse describes it in verse 14. Check it out. He says, if you don't get wisdom, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast about it or deny the truth, don't act like you, you got it all figured out when you know you don't, because he says this, such wisdom does not come down from heaven. So there is a wisdom from heaven, and there is a wisdom that is, that is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. And, and here's why I think that, that, here's why we're responding differently. That some of, we're going through the same stuff, and some are operating by a wisdom from heaven, and some are operating earthly. Some are operating unspiritual. Dare I say, some are operating demonic. Maybe not even knowing it, but there is a wisdom that is from this earth that is not from heaven, that is, he said, earthly. It's, it's a type of wisdom. It's a type of, of knowledge or understanding that, that, but does not come with any form of godliness at all. There's this wisdom from heaven, but it's earthly, or not from heaven, that is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find, look, and I got... This message, hey, is for anybody who through this season and the chaos of it, who got a little bit out of sync in here. Like your life just got a little bit out of order. And you know it, just like, just like you, you, you didn't respond. Like looking back, you go, man, I wish I would have responded differently on that. So today, like, like if that's you and you're looking back and that's every one of us can look back and go, wow, I wish that hindsight thing. But, but what we need is is wisdom. So this message for anyone that got a little bit out of sync today, you're a little bit out of order today, or maybe even because of the, the trials and the difficulty, maybe even picked up some evil practices like along the way because we were operating not from a wisdom that came from heaven in the chaos and the scattering and the trial that we've all been through. We, we just, we started operating by the earthly wisdom something that was unspiritual, something that was producing something that is demonic. And let me just say it this way, that was stealing, killing, and destroying stuff. And we see it, we'll see, we see the results now, that disorder, that death, that destruction, the things being robbed from it because we're trying the earth's way instead of God's way. This is the world's way. This is the world's way. It has been a tough year, hasn't it? It's been a challenging year, year and a half. We've all experienced, like I said, a lot of the same things. There's some unique things, though, that you've been through. No one else has. There's unique things I've been through. No one else has. But for a lot of us, we've kind of 
Many, all the parents in here have to become teachers, right? We all have to do the homeschooling thing and, and figure out how to do a homeschooling thing. And, and we had the same quarantine and the same pandemic and we've all had a, maybe varying degrees of loss. I lost my brother in January, right before the pandemic hit. My, my brother who's 13 months older than me, passed away and he had mental illness and, and had to deal with that into the pandemic. We had shifts on my team, on my staff, and I, I mean, I was asking God, like, Lord, how do I lead a church in the middle of a pandemic? Like, you guys, there's no playbook for this. There is no, like, there's no seminar to go to where someone else is like, well, you know, in a pandemic, here's the steps you follow. There was none of that. Like, I, I, like for all of you, we were all going through this thing going, what in the world is this? How do we process this? So do you know that there is a, a wisdom from heaven that is accessible to you? Wisdom, like, well, when you don't know what to do, there is wisdom will show you what to do. The wisdom from heaven will give you access to what to do when you don't know what to do. Back in James chapter one, verse five, James says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. And he gives generously to all without, he says, without finding fault. So he's not gonna, he's not gonna like point a finger at you. Hey, because you messed up, because you're this and that, I'm not gonna give, no, no, no. He's, He's actually gonna give it to you no matter what. Like without fault finding, if you seek God for wisdom, he wants to show you. And you can, I, I, just, I wanna open your mind up, you guys. You can get in touch with a resource from heaven. That there is a wisdom from heaven. There is a resource from heaven that wants to lead and guide. And I wanna challenge our worldly way of thinking and allow God to imprint some things upon our heart, a wisdom that comes from, from heaven. Listen, a skill of living for this age, because this age is crazy. I'm not sure every age is crazy, I'm sure, I'm sure, but I believe we're living in some of these end times and, and my gosh, as a pastor, I feel responsible to help prepare you and this is it right here, I believe this is it, that if you can get this wisdom, you'd respond differently the next time. I believe that's the difference. That is the difference of, of those who are responding one way to another way. So let's finish the verses in verse 17 and 18 in James chapter three in this section about wisdom from heaven. But the wisdom that comes from heaven, so there's a wisdom from heaven, there's a wisdom from earth. The wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Then it closes with an interesting last verse and I'll explain it to you, like why he closes with this at the end of the message. Peacemakers who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. So what I wanna to do today is go over the six things that define God's wisdom. The six things that James says, this is the wisdom from heaven. This is what it looks like. And I want you to do two things today. I want you to learn it, but, but then I want you to impress it upon your heart and let God change you from the inside out to be transformed by it. Can I get an amen, church? Amen? All right. Here's, here's what the wisdom of heaven looks like. These six things, James says. Write some notes. Here's the first thing. He says, the wise have a pure heart. The wise have a pure heart. Uh, he says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, so don't try to put it somewhere on the list. This is first of all, pure. In fact, I'll put it this way. If you don't have this one first, you can't get access to the other five. Okay, that everything stems from, have you allowed God to cleanse and purify your heart? Everything else stems from this pure posture of a heart. Now, let me explain that. Let me explain what purity is. Purification is not perfection. You're never gonna be able to attain that. Purification is an attitude that says, God, I just... I don't like being this way. I don't like that. I don't want that anymore. I want to be like you. I want what you want, God. I want to follow you. That's why the psalmist said, create in me a clean heart, O God. In Romans, it says, the godly hate what is evil and cling to what is good. And I'm not saying that sometimes it's not a struggle, like from time to time it is. I'm just saying that the wise love purity. In fact, the result, here's the result. Watch this. Titus says it this way. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are corrupted. Now this is actually describing the process of salvation. That when God touches 
your life, what he does is he purifies your heart and he changes you into a new person that actually loves good. You like, you love the good stuff, the good things. In fact, one place in 1 John, he says that God will transform your heart so much that the laws of God are no longer a burden, but they're a desire. Like, like God's will is something you even desire in your life. So you're not going, oh God, you mean I gotta go to that group that Pastor Sean was talking about? You mean I got, oh, do I have to give that up? No, he changes you from the inside out to where you desire the things that God wants you to desire. So he's saying, your desires change. Matthew chapter five. This is what Jesus says, Matthew chapter five, verse eight. He says, blessed are the pure in heart for, because these are the actual Christians. These are the, these are the ones who actually will stand before God one day, who actually see God. These are the real Christians, the ones who have allowed God to change them from the inside out. So here's the question for you. You're like, what does an impure heart look like? right? What does that look like? And to answer that question, we probably should answer like, what does, what does a pure, like what does pure even mean? What does it mean to be pure? So when something is, is pure, when something is pure, like pure gold, it's, it's without contamination. It's without any of the contaminants. So something can be like 99% pure gold or 100% pure gold, but it's not pure unless all the foreign elements are removed from that thing. Like what is pure water? Pure water is when all those foreign elements and contaminants are taken out of the water. I remember the first time I tasted purified water. I was like, oh my God, what have I been drinking my whole life? I know some people, you guys are still drinking tap and I don't know if you know what you're putting in your body, all those contaminants and stuff. Cause once you drink some purified water, you're just like, oh my goodness. Like this is different. This is, this is, Pure, and he's saying here, this is what it means. You're asking God, God, are there any contaminants inside of me? Is there any foreign elements that shouldn't be inside here? In fact, next week, we're gonna get to some of these verses. James chapter four, verse four, he says, you adulterous people. Now don't get offended at that. I know that's strong language. James is very strong and all. So what does it mean to be an adulterer though? An adulterer is someone who's married but he's got a little something going on on the side. And I wonder how many of us in here love God. You love God. But you got a little something going on on the side. And he's going, hey, if you're an adulterer, don't you know that friendship with the world means that, that you're actually separating yourself, enmity, you're creating enmity or separation from God? Therefore, he says, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world, you're not there yet, but if you don't get the contaminants out, you will become an enemy of God. And I think it's just worth asking the question because if we're gonna stand firm in these trials and difficulties in the age that we're living in, um, we need the wisdom of God. And we need to ask, like, God, am I allowing some impure things into my life. And I just, I don't think we grapple with the questions enough. I don't think we grapple with the questions like, God, should I be watching this? I don't think we do that. I don't think we do that enough. You know, God, should I be listening to this? God, should I be doing, should I be doing this? I just like, and again, you don't need me to be your Holy Spirit. You don't need me to tell you like what you're doing. You got a Bible, you have a Holy Spirit. Every one of you can actually discern where, what's going on and what God wants you to shift in your life. It reminds me of a story, though, of a kid who wanted to have his friends over to watch a movie. He's asking his mom, it was an R-rated movie, and he was like, Mom, please, you know, and I know it's R-rated, but it's just, it's just got a few scenes, and they're so fast, they're so quick, you don't even notice that they're there. Come on, please, Mom, please, 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 please. And the mom's like, fine, go ahead, you can have them over, I'll even, I'll even bake for you guys. And he's like, really, Mom? Okay, so he has his friends over there in the basement, they're watching this R-rated movie, Mom just starts baking his brownies, and kid's favorite recipe, she's, she's mixing up the brownies. And then she goes out into the backyard where their do this dachshund dog named Ginger does her business. And she goes and she just get, gets a little bit of that business. Not much, not much, just a little bit. And she goes and puts it in, the, in that brownie bowl. <laughs> Bakes those brownies and 
cuts them up, puts them on a nice, beautiful platter, looking delicious, and says, hey, kids, <laughs> comes down to that bracement. I baked you some brownies. Here you go. He's like, Whoa. oh, but, but, but just, just so you know, it's not a lot. You won't even notice it. It's just a little, there's just a little bit. Uh, you really won't even taste it. You won't taste it, but there's just a little bit. In it. How many of you know a little bit of poop goes a long way? <laughs> yeah, I said poop in church. Come on. A little bit of poop in your life will go a long way too. James says in James chapter four, verse eight, here's what he says. Come close to God. Why, why are you trying to, why you want to see what you can get away with, man? Don't you just, James is like, no, no, no. This is what you should be doing. You should come in this way. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. And I love this word, for your loyalty is divided. Like you, you love God, but you got a thing going on with the world. You got a little thing on the side here, man. And he's going, look, 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 your loyalty is divided. Those who are wise have pure hearts. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how much poop are you going to allow in the brownies? No, I'm just kidding. Here's what question you need to ask yourself. It's the same question, just said differently. How much of the world am I going to allow in my life? How much of the world am I going to allow? I think it's just a great question you need to ask if you're going to be wise, if you're going to be standing firm, if you're going to be on the other side next time, you know, responding with wisdom next time. You, you should ask this question, okay? The second thing he says, the wise love peace. They love peace. Remember, he says that wisdom comes from heaven is they love, their peace loving. They don't love contention and quarrels. We live in a generation that loves to argue. They argue for sport now. You watch the news and they like, they try to put people on the news that have the most polar opposites and rah, 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 and the moderator becomes this like referee and then he has to just shut it all down. It's all like entertainment now, news. It's just like how argumentative can we get people it's crazy forget social media y'all know man you can't even comment on something you make a comment like oh that's a beautiful blue flower right there and, and then you get someone that's the state flower of this thing with a governor then how dare you cancel this guy like oh my gosh what are you doing the art this just everyone is just wanting to fight and i think we become argumentative and i think even in the church we let it seep in that we've, we're so argumentative. And I'm telling you, you can't be wise and love to argue. You can't. Okay, the, those who are wise love peace. A smart person may know what to say, but a wise person knows when and how to say it. James chapter 1 says in verse 20, that human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Proverbs chapter 14, 29, a wise man controls his temper. He knows that anger causes mistakes. I'll give you one more verse, Proverbs chapter 20. It's a mark of good character to avert quarrels, not to jump up in the mix, but avert the quarrel. But fools love to pick fights. So he's saying, stop. You don't got to get involved in every debate. You don't gotta express your opinion every time. Stop it, you don't need to jump into it. Here's what I think, you don't have to engage. Every time, you don't. Love, peace, well I'm trying to resolve conflict. I want, I'm all for conflict resolution. I'm all for it, I'm, I'm an advocate of it. I encourage you to do it. But it's not always possible and it's not always wise because conflict resolution takes two parties. It's not, all, I, I'm, I'm for it, I teach conflict resolution. Let's, let's, let's live in peace with one another. But I, I'm challenging you to do something even higher than conflict resolution. It's even more wise than conflict resolution. And it's conflict revolution. And, and conflict revolution says this, if you, if you can't change them, change me. God, if they ain't gonna change, change me then, God. Do it inside of me. That's, what come, that's, that's those who love peace, okay? Conflict actually can't continue without your participation. It can't. So if you want to be wise, you don't have to engage in every fight and every misunderstanding. And every time you're slighted, you don't need to. You don't need to every time. You don't need to. All right. Number three, 
Are you getting something out of this, you guys? Come on. Number three, the wise consider it. I love this. Look what he says. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is consider it. You know what the definition of consider it is? They consider it. Yeah. I'll be here all day. Uh, in other words, they don't, they don't always think they know. They attempt to understand. They consider it. In fact, the first verse that we started with, the question of the day in verse 13, who is wise and understanding among you? You can't separate those two. Wisdom and understanding, they go together. These are the people that just go, hmm, I never thought of it that way. They, they, they consider it. I think we need more of that in our politics. I think we need more of that in our jobs. I think we need more of that in our marriages. I think we need more of that in our, in our leadership. I think we need more of that in everywhere we just go, hmm, I didn't see it that way. Hey, let me just think about that for a moment. Let me just think about it. Let me be considerate by considering it. In Romans chapter 15, Paul was settling a fight between two Christians. One had a strong conviction about something that the other group didn't really have a strong conviction about. And he says this, we who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive. He's like, he's telling like, you don't get the luxury of that. It's like, oh, that's no big deal to me. No, no, no. Like it's a big deal to them though. We gotta be sensitive to about the things like this. We must not just please ourselves. So you don't have the luxury to go, well, I don't think that way. I think this is right. So that's why. You don't got the luxury at all to make that, that case, that stance. You know, we must, we should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. Sometimes you just need to stop and listen to somebody else and consider it. I mean, your marriages would be so much healthier. You'd have a lot more wisdom if you stopped and considered it. If you said, hmm, let me think on that a little bit. Let me stop thinking. Thinking my Look, I love what John Maxwell says. He says, give your thoughts a break. You already think them. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to just stop thinking your own thoughts. Stop thinking your own way, your own perspective. Stop. Hmm. Honey, I didn't think about it that way. Let me just consider what you're saying. Even for your kids. You know what, kid? I didn't think about that. Let me, let me consider what you're saying. Yeah, how many of you done that with your kids, right? I'm just saying, this is, this is what wisdom looks like. Wisdom is considerate. Your life would be better if you had the wisdom of heaven. That wisdom is considerate. Here's number four. The wisdom of heaven is the wise are willing to yield. Here's how he says, the wisdom that comes from heaven is submissive. Ain't nobody in here probably likes that word, Submissive. But it's a word you find all throughout the scriptures. I got a friend who said the other day, he pastors a great church in, in Phoenix. He said, I notice young Christians have a lot of preachers they listen to, but not a lot of shepherds they submit to. And he said, you know what the solution is? Crave correction as much as you crave inspiration. And I think that we like, okay, this is what wisdom looks like. Wisdom is able to, Submit. Wisdom is willing to yield, all right? And, and that word submissive, in, in the Greek, this word actually, that probably is not the best translation of this word. It literally means willing to yield, uh, to go, wait a minute, you, you're right. <laughs> well, that is better. That is a better way. I think a lot of us, especially those in places of authority, dads, moms, Husbands, pastors, leaders, um, it would, it's just wise to say, you know what? You're right. I have a dream <laughs> that one day when I'm watching those news stations, when they're getting into the heat of that debate, you know what I mean? When they're throwing down this view, and you know there's got to be a better, there is one, one way has got to be better than the other, and there, I got this dream like one day that after they throw out all the information that one of them goes, you know what? I changed my mind. You're right. <laughs> I'm gonna do it that way. Now, it's probably never gonna happen on news, okay? And it sure ain't gonna happen in Washington, D.C. 
But my goodness, let it happen in the church of Jesus Christ in those who are wise. Like we, we who are wise should be able to yield and submit and be able to go, you know what? I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong in that. Dude, that's, that's right. That's better. I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to submit to that. I've talked to some people. Some of you parents and some of your parents have never said they're, they're sorry, ever. You ever grow up with those parents? Never said, oh, I'm sorry. Never said, oh, you know what, you're right. Or some of you are treated, never said that, whether to your marriage or to your kids. And I'm telling you, you are doing a damage and disservice. You are acting like a fool if you cannot humble yourself. Here's what Proverbs chapter, and again, if it's not the wisdom of heaven, if you can't say, I'm sorry, if you can't say, hey, you know what, you're right, it ain't the wisdom of heaven. It's the wisdom that is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. If you can't go there, if you can't submit, if you can't yield, it's, the, it's not from heaven. That spirit you're operating by when you're not yielding and not submitting is not from heaven. Okay, Proverbs chapter 12. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. Oh, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me get your point of view. Let me get your perspective on this. So you have to ask yourself this question. Here's the question. Am I reasonable? Can I be reasoned with? Okay. Or do I corner myself in, and then when I figure out that might, I might be wrong, do I just run and hide or never bring that up again? Can, am, I, am I reasonable? Can I be reasoned with? It's a mark of wisdom. Number five, the wise minimize the mistakes of others. This is something that the wise do. He says the wisdom that comes from heaven is full of mercy. I know what you did is horrible, but I'm not only gonna forgive you, I'm not going to like highlight this moment of your life forever. I'm not gonna enlarge and highlight this moment and maximize this moment of your life. No, 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 I'm gonna... I'm going to let that go. I'm going to minimize it. You know what? I'm going to give you another chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, maybe you didn't mean it. I'm just going to give you another chance. I'm going to let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Some of y'all need that to be your theme song, theme song, man. Oh, but pastor, they did it again. They hurt me. Let it go. They did it a third time. They did it again. Let it go. Hey, a four time. You know, fool me once, pastor. Four time. Okay, this time, let it go. <laughs> because the wise minimize the mistake. The, the, if, if, if wisdom is not a good enough motivation for you, then this should be. In James chapter two, we studied this a while ago. It is for me. It is, this, this is motivation for me not to hold on to offense. There's not, like, I don't, like, I'm not good at a lot of things, but this is one thing, like, I don't care. I'll, like, I do not hold on to offense. If people can offend me, I'm like, I'm good, you know? That's like, I'm good with it. I'll, I will move on, because it's this verse right here that I'm like, I do not allow offense to sit on my heart. James chapter two says, speak and act as those who are gonna be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who does not give mercy. And I don't know about you, but I got a lot that needs forgiven. I need a lot of forgiveness. So I, I, I'm not willing to, to allow myself to be unforgiven just because I ain't going to forgive somebody else and let go of that fence. No way. I'm going to let that thing go. No way. Mercy triumphs over judgment. It reminds me of a story of this grandma and grandpa. They were, they were celebrating with their family, grandkids. They were in their 50-year anniversary. And, uh, and the, the kids all ask, like, Gra- Grandma, how did you do it? They're ha- how do you have a long, happy marriage? What's the secret? And she says, I'll tell you what the secret is. is, is uh, when I first married Grandpa, I decided to make a list of the top 10 things that he did that I just hated. I just like, uh, just, I, and I decided those 10 things, I was going to let them off the hook. I was going to forgive them. Those 10 things, I just let And they were like, that is so cool, Grandma, that you just pre-decided to just forgive them immediately, not hold that grudge or get into an argument and just kind of overlook it. What were those 10 things? They're like, what were the 10 things that Grandpa, like, like, you don't like about Grandpa? And she goes, you know what? I never got around to making the list. She said, every time he just did something dumb, 
and it got on my nerves. I said, lucky for him, that's on the list. I'm t- look, I'm just telling you guys, your life would be so much better. There would be, there wouldn't be disorder. What you're sensing as out of sync, right? How you just pick up on evil practices, there wouldn't be if you operated by a different kind of wisdom. There wouldn't be. If we, it would be so much better if you had this wisdom from heaven instead of operating by the wisdom of the world and, and, and the wisdom of heaven that minimizes the offense of others. When in doubt, forgive them. Forgive them. But I think, you no, know, pastor, they're really wrong. They really messed up. Like, are, are you sure? Yeah, because I'd rather stand before God having loved too much than having lived too harshly. I'd rather, I'd rather be like, hey, Jay, Jesus, go, Jason, you were so gracious, man. You gave way too much grace than, than for him to go, you judge. Because if I judge harshly, I'm going to be judged harshly. So when I get there, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'd rather, I'd rather have, make the mistake of giving too much love and too much grace. So here's the question you need to ask yourself, and I love it. What do I need to stop bringing up? Like, what do you need? What do you, you're still bringing stuff up. You're still talking about that same stuff and you just need to let it go. You're operating by a different wisdom and that wisdom is causing disorder and evil in your life. Let it go. There is a wisdom from heaven that you need to access to. Look, don't, don't rub it in, rub it out. Let it go. Let it go. That's what, that's what the wisdom of heaven does. Number six, the last one here. The wise are authentic. And he uses two words here. The wisdom that comes from heaven is impartial and sincere. And both of those words come from a derivative of the Greek, the word hypocrite in the Greek. And some of your translation even says hypocrite in there. But that word, that's just not a word in the Greek language. It's actually a historical figure. It's a character. In the the, uh, uh, historical Greek theater, they had a character named the hypocrite. And the hypocrite was like, like there would be 12 people in a play, but it, every person would be played by like three actors or actresses. And what they would do is they would just, they would, they would put on a mask for this character and they come out and, and put on a different mask for another character. They play multiple roles by wearing different masks. And they come in and be this and come in with that. And James says, if you want the wisdom of heaven, you got to take off the mask. You got to remove what you're hiding behind. And we're living in a very masked world right now. We're, we are. And, and where people are just covering it up, where there's so many secrets and shame. But listen, you cannot be wise and hide at the same time. You can't. Some of you are alone in your thoughts. Like you have, some of you have no one to share your real, honest, authentic thoughts and feelings with. And I'm telling you, the enemy will exploit that in you. He'll lie to you. He'll, he'll, he'll start to destroy you from the inside out and just exploit, lie, and hurt you. And you don't need to tell me your secrets or a whole bunch of people, but you better tell someone. Someone. You're, you're, and this is where small groups come in. At Discovery, we got group link coming up. And this is where the power of groups at Discovery come in is because in a crowd like this, you ain't gonna, I'm not telling you to sh- sh- get up on this stage and share your secrets to everybody. That would not be wise, by the way. That actually is, it, biblically, they say not to do that. So don't do that. But do, get, get in a group and about, you know, halfway through that group, around four, five, six weeks, you're gonna develop some relationships and build some trust. And you're gonna get to a point, and I'm encouraging you to do this. If you wanna be wise, then you need to do this. You get to a point where you say, hey, not to everybody, but to some, you say, hey, you know what? Can I share something with you? Hey, I never told anybody this, but hey, I'm actually dealing with this. No one really, hey, this actually happened. Can I tell you something that actually, I've never told anybody this before. The Bible says that that's what the wisdom of heaven looks like. The wisdom of heaven doesn't wear a mask. It's, it's authentic. You cannot be wise and hide at the same time. So here's the question. The question is, what am I hiding? What are you, what are you hiding? Because you can't be wise and hide at the same time. And then 
there's this interesting last verse, and we're going to close here in just a moment. I studied this last verse for a while, for, for over an hour, just this one verse, looking up the, the Greek words and the context, and why, why, was, why is this? Talking about wisdom, and then he jumps into peacemakers. Why does God want us wise? And I, I found something here in this verse, James chapter 3, verse 18. He says, peacemakers who sow, so you're like offering this to others, right? You're offering peace. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And I looked up this word peacemakers. You know what that word means? It means a bringer of national tranquility. Why, why does God want us wise? Do you know, God wants you wise so that you would walk out of her here and affect the world with peace. That they would, that, that everyone is like experiencing the same season and struggles and chaos and quarantine and fears and school's coming and all. Everyone's experiencing the same thing, but you're operating by different principles and they go, wait a second. Something is different. That there is, you're like sowing peace in the middle of chaos and fear and worry and doubt and discouragement. And God wants you operating by something different out there, sowing peace reaping a harvest of righteousness. That's, what, that's why he wants you wise, so that you can live different. And they can see you and go, something's different about you. Amen, somebody? Hey, let me pray that for you, over you right now, before you leave these walls. Come on, every head bow, every eye closed. God, will you not only give us wisdom and in our intellect and, and knowledge, but will you touch our hearts, imprint upon our hearts a wisdom from heaven, God, that we would leave here changed, transformed, that we wouldn't be operating by the wisdom of this world, this earthly, unspiritual, this demonic, God, that we would be operating from the wisdom of heaven, sowing peace, God, help us to have pure hearts, Lord, purify our hearts, that we would be submissive and willing to yield and honest and sincere and full of mercy and just letting it Go, oh, make us wise, God, so that we can sow peace wherever we go. With every head bowed and eye closed. That first point I want to take us back to, that wisdom is first of all pure. Some of you are here today with every head bowed and every eye closed. Some of you are here and you're listening and, and you're thinking like, man, I got so, Pastor, I got a lot of contaminants. I got a lot, like there's a lot in here that I'm not pure. I'm just not. I know I'm not. Maybe you're here today and, and you know Jesus, but there's a lot of contaminants that got in there. There was disorder and evil practices that got in there. And I wanna give you an opportunity right now to allow God to say the, that prayer of David, created me a clean heart, God. That's actually what God does. The moment you surrender the control of your life to him, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. He will purify us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Hey, this is how you get a pure heart, surrender. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. For some of you, you need that. You need to start right here. Point number one, creating me a pure heart. I surrender the control of my life. Some of you need to do it for the very first time. Others of you need to do it again today. And I wanna give you that opportunity right now. I'm not gonna have you come up to the front or stand up or anything like that, but right where you are, I wanna pray with you. I'm gonna to count to three in just a moment, and I'd love for you to just lift up your hand and raise it high. If that's you, and you say, God created me, change me from the inside. I just don't wanna try harder. I want you to make something new inside of me, brand new, God. Do it right here, right now, a fresh start. Come on, that's you. One, two, three, all over this place. Lift up that hand. Create in me, God, a pure heart. I don't want to have to even try hard at it. You just do it. Change my desires, God. Change me from the inside out, Jesus. I surrender my life to you all over this place. Yes, 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 all over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, if you're watching online, just type that in. I need Jesus. And we're going to pray together right now. Go ahead and put your hands down. If that's you, will you just whisper right where you are with me, Jesus. Say something like this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today, I recognize I need you. And I surrender my life to you. I give you all of me. My hopes, my dreams, my past, my future. 
take over. I'm yours. Jesus, I declare that you're my Lord and my Savior. Come live inside of me. Make me pure. Clean me, God, from the inside out. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise if you receive that word today. Amen.